Intersections are necessary to connect people driving, walking, and bicycling from one route to another. Where roads intersect, crashes are more likely to occur. In fact, each year roughly one quarter of traffic fatalities and about one half of all traffic injuries in the United States are attributed to intersections. There were over 10,000 intersection-related fatalities across the United States in 2019. Insufficient sight distance can be a contributing factor in intersection fatalities. The FHWA defines intersection sight distance as the distance a motorist can see approaching vehicles before their line of sight is blocked by an obstruction near the intersection. The driver of a vehicle approaching or departing from a stopped position at an intersection should have an unobstructed view of the intersection, including any traffic control devices, and sufficient lengths along the intersecting roadway to permit the driver to anticipate and avoid potential collisions. Examples of obstructions include crops, hedges, trees, parked vehicles, utility poles, or buildings. In addition, the hills and the curves as you approach the intersection can reduce the sight triangle of vehicles navigating the intersection. By removing these obstructions from the sight triangles at stop controlled intersections, drivers will be able to see approaching vehicles on the main line without obstruction and therefore make better decisions about entering the intersection safely. These better decisions can reduce overall intersection crashes by 48%. The area needed for this unobstructed view is called the clear sight triangle. To perform a check for adequate sight distance, two people are typically needed. One person takes a position approximately 15 feet back from the edge of the major road travelway. The other person goes down the road a distance equal to the required intersection sight distance. Each person has an object to sight by marking 42 inches above the pavement. The position 15 feet back from the edge of the major road travelway approximates the position of the driver. An object painted orange up to the 42 inch height is used to sight by. This height is the standard eye height for a passenger vehicle driver and approximates their line of sight. To find the required intersection sight distance, use Table 3 from the FHWA Intersection Safety Manual. For example, at 55 miles per hour, the intersection sight distance would be 610 feet. The other person travels the required intersection sight distance, measuring with a wheel or other device. When traffic is clear, they will move into the lane with an object marked at 42 inches, again to approximate the driver eye height. The person on the minor approach, 15 feet from the major road travelway, sights down a line 42 inches above the pavement. If they can see the other object marked at 42 inches, then you have adequate intersection sight distance. Both right and left approaches should be checked. If one of them does not have adequate intersection sight distance, the obstruction should be removed if possible. If it is not possible to achieve intersection sight distance, then every effort should be made to meet the stopping sight distance. To find the stopping sight distance, use Table 3 from the FHWA Intersection Safety Manual. For example, at 55 miles per hour, the stopping sight distance would be 495 feet. This is less than the intersection sight distance of 610 feet. Stopping sight distance provides sufficient distance for drivers to anticipate and avoid collisions. However, in some cases, this may require a major road vehicle to stop or slow to accommodate the maneuver by a minor road vehicle. To enhance traffic operations and safety, intersection sight distances are desirable. The procedure outlined assumes stop control of the minor road approaches, using driver eye heights associated with passenger cars, both minor and major roads are at a level grade, considers a left turn from the minor road as the worst case scenario. The major road is an undivided two-way, two-lane roadway with no turn lanes. If conditions at the intersection being evaluated differ from these assumptions, 
an experienced traffic engineer or highway designer should be consulted to determine appropriate intersection site distance.